criminal tax evasion in Britain, laws and regulations defied in the United States. It's nothing to celebrate. The hopeful thing is that throughout the free world, the public is coming to recognize the dangers of big government and is taking steps to control it. But it will be no easy task to cut government down to size. Today, in country after country, the strongest special interest has become the entrenched bureaucracy, whether at the national or at the local level. In addition, each of us gets special benefits from one or another governmental program. The temptation is to try to cut down government at someone else's expense while retaining our own special privileges. That way is stalemate. The right approach is to tackle head on the explosive growth in government spending. Let's give the government a budget the way each of us has a budget. A movement in this direction is already underway in the United States with the many proposals for constitutional amendments limiting government spending. Several states have already adopted such an amendment. There is strong pressure for a similar amendment at the federal level. Those amendments would force government to operate within a strict budget. Each special interest would have to compete with other special interests for a larger share of a fixed pie, instead of all of them being able to join forces at the expense of the taxpayer. This is an important step, but it is only a first step. No piece of paper by itself can solve our problems for us. What we need is widespread public recognition that the central government should be limited to its basic functions, defending the nation against foreign enemies, preserving order at home, mediating our disputes. We must come to recognize that voluntary cooperation through the market and in other ways is a far better way to solve our problems than turning them over to the government. This is where much of the future strength of the United States lies, in places like Ottumwa Island, where ordinary hardworking American people live. People of all economic levels live in Ottumwa but there are no extremes of either wealth or poverty. All are part of a community, each part of which depends on the others for a stable and happy life worth living. This is a kind of community that formed the character of democratic America. We began this series by stressing two ideas the idea of human freedom as embodied in Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence, the idea of economic freedom as embodied in Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. Those two ideas, working together, came to their greatest fruition here in the heartland of America. But the basic character of the society that they created has been changing as a result of the rise of another set of ideas. We have forgotten the basic truth that the founders of this country knew so well, that the greatest threat to human freedom is a concentration of power, whether in the hands of government or anyone else. Throughout the Western world, more and more of us are coming to recognize the dangers of an overgoverned society. But it will take more than a recognition of danger. Freedom is not the natural state of mankind. It is a rare and wonderful achievement. It will take an understanding of what freedom is, of where the dangers to freedom come from. It will take the courage to act on that understanding if we are not only to preserve the freedoms that we have, but to realize the full potential of a truly free society.